Right, power circle. Even, Guys, before even. we start, sorry, that's um before we start, can we just um can I ask everyone to just if you can say a prayer for Hero? He got injured on Friday evening when he went for his scout um trip and they suspect a fractured a, a, a small fracture in his ankle. Oh wow. So he's on crutches at the minute, um, and a boot, but yeah, he's painkillers are working fine. But just to keep it in prayer, if you can, please. Yes. Yeah. Oh most definitely. Yeah, most, most definitely. Of course, Mariam. Send him a little message as well, Mariam. Will do. Thank you. Mariam, sorry, Kira just overheard as well. And she said to say she's so sorry to hear that about Hero. She hopes she gets better soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My hero. All right. Yeah. Say a little prayer later on. Right, so we are coming towards the end of the month and we are coming towards the end of that fiat currency stuff, that, 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 that money, that normal money stuff. And we are moving into our blockchain transactions through Ethereum. Yeah. And um yeah and then we're moving into the nfts just a quick update on that um i've now found a designer and we're now working on the actual nfts itself um the utilities i actually go into email them all to you to remind everybody about the classes what class you're in and the utilities that come with it. Um, there's a lot of good things happening. I, I'm literally a little bit snowed under, but I'm managing because um, I'm trying to put a lot of big things in place. Um, not saying that what we've done already is not big things, but yeah, I'm trying to make us have a lot more fun. Uh, <coughs> I've tried to, which I have lined up a good few special guests for next month as well. So um, your NFT purchase utility will be um, heavily rewarded. And then other than that, we are getting down to business. So I haven't prepared a class today. So I wanted to go in off a feeling, didn't want it to end up just being motivational but I wanted to go off a truthful feeling of um, a state that you may get into um, when it comes to business. How I look at it is when you start business, it's, it's like honeymoon period. You know, when you get into a relationship and everything seems so exciting and you know, it's go, go, go. And it's color, color, color. Like, yeah, let's get a logo and let's do this and let's do that. and that lasts is for a little while because there's a thing that I call the three F's, which is friends, family, and favors. Friends, family, and favors are the people that, the people and the things that you should rely on when starting your business because um, they'll give you honest feedback, honest critics. They tend to support because um, I could be the nice side or the, or the normal side, which is like, you know, they want to say that they supported you in the beginning stages or they actually do generally want to see you win and they support or they feel compelled to, put, um, to support because of your way that you're promoting it to them or the heartstrings that you might be pulling, um, which whatever it is, in the beginning stages, um, the, the, the support, the critiques and the feedback from your friends, family and favors is um, it's important. And it actually is something that you should, if you can use it to your advantage because some people are unfortunate to not have friends, family and favors to be able to call on when they're starting something. But then there comes a stage when 
two things happen. One, your friends, family, and favors um, slows down, and you start building up a uh, what can I say? A annoyance of feeling like why isn't people supporting me or why isn't my own people wanting to see me win or why don't they just repost my post or why don't they just broadcast my thing or why don't they turn up to my event if we just stay on that stage for a moment um it's important to understand how to separate your emotions from business and even lean into a side of empathy when considering others, especially like I explained a few weeks ago, when they are going to be your consumer or they're going to be your customer or somebody that supports you. Because understanding their position in life and understanding their financial position, understanding how about if we just lean over to the total opposite side? How about understanding the more that you win and they're not winning, it's not that they don't like you. It could be that they don't like their self because they start thinking, wow, I remember when me and you used to talk about this idea and then now you're moving with this idea and I'm still in the same place. So sometimes it's not even just for a hatred of yourself or not even hatred, that's a strong word, but not a, a envious place about yourself. It's a, it comes from a place of, of self, from their self. But then also the reason why it's important to separate your emotions from business is because when you understand business and understand your business plan, your business strategy, your business um, target audience, your marketing plan, your investment, the time you're spending on it, your analytics. When you consider all these things, do you know that friends, family and favours don't even come into the thought process? Because they kind of don't really fit into the categories of your business structure. And if they do, it's kind of maybe a, a, a slight positive, but at the end of the day, you're not going to get rich or change your position in life off of friends, family, and favors. Your main aim, if you are having a business, and I can't even say your main aim, because really your aim might not be to be a multi-million pound business. So your aim should be to cover or hit your targets. So therefore you are always following your business plan. So you might feel that you want to earn £5,000 a month because £2,000 a month covers your lifestyle and your family. And having an extra 3000 will put you in a position to live very comfortable. Now, just hypothetically speaking, you got to, I don't know, £3,000 a month and then someone offered you £15,000 a month and then you spent two months trying to get that £15,000 deal. And then you know, unfortunately that 15,000 pound deal fell through. It's at that time, again, would you learn to lean away from your emotions of the loss of what it could have been and then start leaning into the, uh, into the um, emotion of, well, my business plan was to get to 5K a month. So you never feel like you dropped all the way to the bottom because you had a plan. And if friends, family and favors are not in your plan, then we need to ease up off of feeling like that our friends and family or people we genuinely know don't repost our things, don't turn up to our events, 
don't book us for their things. It's not always or not majority of the time your fault. This is just how the world works. But when I was explaining to you about advertising and promotion, I was trying to sink into you on how many millions of people are on social media and how many people didn't see your post when you posted it. So then you start leaning on your friends and family and thinking, well, I'll repost my thing because nobody's interacted with your post or nobody's seen your post. But you haven't leaned into your business plan and looked at your analytics and started to see that, okay, I'm posting at midnight. This ain't even making sense. By the time my people wake up, there's a million posts gone already. So I can't, am I, at that time again, are you questioning, am I feeling like people should help me? Or am I feeling like, am I following my plan? Have I done enough? Have I done things in the right formula of what I saw or what I was taught? Because sometimes we get into positions in life and we want to play the victim because it's easier to play the victim. Do you know why? It's very, very hard being independent. And the more and the more I teach and the more that I explain and the more that I study, I have really come to realize that being a business owner is a lot more harder than having a side hustle. And if I was to start emphasizing that a lot of people may be better off having a two day a week job and then having their side hustle, the balance of feeling hard done by or feeling like I can't achieve what I believe I could achieve it would ease up a little piece. Like, do you understand the saying of like, take a couple steps back to take a few steps forward? Like sometimes we need to slow down. Sometimes we need to take a look. Sometimes we need to analyze. We need to ask ourselves, is this working? We need to ask ourselves, did I get lucky? Because guess what? Next month you might not get lucky. And then you've got to feel that pain again that you've felt the month before the month you got lucky. So we have to stick to plan. So that's why I said one side of it is friends, family, and favors. But the other side of it is what I was just leaning into now. Are we understanding the key fundamentals into what makes a good business. Because I believe, like myself, I had good side hustles or I understood that I wanted big businesses but didn't understand, say for instance, systems on how to make the mechanism actually just work. Do I understand the do I understand properly, like without thinking about it, the steps I need to take to get a clothing idea, what's in my head, into a garment in my hand? Do I understand it? Do you know like oh it's right here. Yes, the night before last, I woke up 3.30 in the morning and stayed up to about 6.30. And I was just drawing, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see all this, but I was just drawing different t-shirt designs and different hoodie designs and different stuff on all these papers. But what I'm explaining is, is 
I'm not, I wasn't dreaming or I wasn't hoping or wishing that I want to create something. I was actually planning to actually understand the steps I'm gonna take to make sure I have clothing for summer, which is our birthday, June the 2nd, which is literally six weeks away. So I've really understood my process. How do I get it from my head, then next to the paper, then next to the computer, then next to the manufacturer, then next to the aeroplane, then next to my house or to my shop. Do you understand? And then even after that, the steps that I've got to take after that to then get models, to then do a photo shoot, to then do the promotion, to then pull it online, to then get a sale. Do you understand every step that you have to take to make a result happen? Or are your results coming by luck? Or are your results coming, you don't know? Do we know the cause and effect what happened? Do we know what we did? Do we know the cause that we did to make the effect happen? Or we don't know what we did and then something happened and you're just grateful? That five Ps, like the three Fs, friends, family favors, five Ps, perfect planning prevents poor performance. I used to actually think, yeah, all my life, being serious, I used to actually think planning and, no, 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 let me say it right. I always used to think that going back to your plan was long because I'm the one who actually made the plan, so I know it. Or I used to think that following steps was long because I know what I'm doing. I actually only became more effective when I started to really understand that I post every Mula Monday. That's my system. So even if I don't post for the whole week on the clothing page, I used to make sure I post on a Monday. And do you know what that actually did? That actually made say 40% of people or 30 actually post their cells wearing Mula cake on a Monday. So my system of what I put in place, what I followed, gave me a result. That result was somebody is going to post themselves wearing Mula cake. That means Every Monday, I was gaining double, if not triple, if not quadruple pr promotion because I'm posting and that is urged somebody else to post without me saying to them, post me, look, hey, Ra, post a picture of you wearing clothing, Ra, repost my thing. When we do certain things, like us here in Power Circle, some of us feel compelled to repost some of the class, some of the bakery, some of the event, because you felt that you want others to see what you was just involved in. That's the feeling that you need to leave people with, that they want to post about your thing. They want to tell somebody about your thing. Now, all of that comes with understanding the steps you are taking to get your result. And the main concept of that whole conversation was about understanding when you start, you can lean on friends, family, and favors. When you are moving forward, then you start making sure you lean on your business plan. Yeah? 
Does everybody understand that so far? Everybody cool with that? Everybody anyone got questions about it? Understood. All good. Right. So, Shadow, do you want to say something? No, no, no. I'm, no. Right. So, the next side of business is understanding the stages that you go through, especially when you're an entrepreneur, in terms of when you have no. So, let's, let's pull it out there. Do you know, like when you're an entrepreneur, you kind of have no steady income. That's how it is. That's how it is deemed. Yeah, but listen to what it is. You could start with not having a steady income until you put your systems in place. And you will start understanding when it is you are going to make money and when it is you are going to have a slow period. So therefore, not having a steady income won't scare you as much because you understand where you are, you understand what's coming, and you understand how long it should roughly blow over. Understand where you are, understand where you're going, and then you should be able to understand how long this period of maybe not having, not getting business, not making money, how long this period should last. Example, I know Mula Kate Clothing, we make money summer, we make money around Black Friday, we make money Christmas, and then we actually do still make money for January, for January, just because of January sales. But there's periods like February or March, like, yeah, let's say February, where you can go from earning two to four thousand pounds a month to earning like 330 quid. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is where I feel I'm at now. I can't see all of it, but this is where I feel I'm at now. You can say it. putting systems in place. Okay. Yeah. Like systems save you from the unknown. Yeah, systems save you from the unknown. So let me give you an example of the of the of the system that's in Mueller Kate Kids Club. Mueller Kate Kids Club has a system. The system in Mueller Kate Kids Club is the timing system and the structure of what happens within the club. Meaning between nine and 10, it will be breakfast and registration. Between 10 and 12, it will be a workshop. Between 12 and one, it will be free play. Um, it will be, uh, no, between 12 and one, it'll be lunchtime. Between one and two, it'll be free play. Between two and four, it's workshop. Between four and five, free play and between five and six is kind of pick up time now that system that's in place has made it easier for anybody who's involved in the company to follow so they don't have to think oh the kids have just finished eating what's happening what do we do now actually let's phone dexter do you know it, that's that doesn't make sense whereas even when i first started I would, I would usually expect that phone call and say, all right, now they finished eating, yeah? Um, have, all, have all of them had um, dessert? And like, you know, micromanaging. Like, you know, I have to understand that systems are there to make people not follow instructions, but to make people feel comfortable that they know what they're doing. So them same systems is that what you've got to put in your life to make you feel comfortable that you know what you're doing. So my Mula Monday example was an example that made me feel comfortable that when I'm hearing Gary V say, um, you need to post, you need to post, I'm thinking, right, I do post and I'm trying. But guess what? I don't feel too bad because I know I don't miss Monday. I don't miss that because that has a domino effect and I've seen the result of it. So that's probably why it made me not miss it. So that's why I say don't do things by luck because you don't know what happened. So you don't know what steps to take again to try and make that happen. When you landed a client, when you, I'm trying to just think of using the room, that's why I'm thinking of the things, examples to give. Like when you landed a client or when you had a talk at this event or when you put on an event, 
what happened different to what happened last time? And if you can identify that, then you'll be able to identify where well, you should be able to identify what did you do different? Was it in a different area? Was it that you done it at a different time of the month? Was it that it was a free event and this was a paid event? Was it that this was an adult event and this was a children's event? How are you monitoring how you are gaining your results? Because when I start talking about this entrepreneurial life, the reason why people don't like it is because it breeds anxiety. That unknown, that fear, it's not easy to deal with so often. So when me and me and Kenyatta speak and we talk about people don't people don't want freedom, they wouldn't even understand how to take that because they 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 will feel like, what do you mean? Like everyone wants freedom. But guess what? I know you don't want freedom. Because you see, when you have freedom, like I've had freedom for a long time. And freedom means you've got to make more decisions. Freedom means you've got to hold, hold yourself accountable. Freedom means you have to be in control. Freedom means you have to know what happened every time. Freedom means what happened, you made happen. There's a full difference when you live under a structured organization or a structured school or a structured company that will make your anxiety levels so low well not all the time but as in so low throughout the basics as in i don't have to think when i'm when i'm going home because home time that that time i don't have to think if i'm gonna make money because guess what i turned up i want my money i don't have to think is, is there going to be work to do today? Because guess what? You don't have to worry about that. The, 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 the people in different departments, they will do stuff and they have to do their work and then work will come down or work will come passed on. And when do I have to eat? You don't have to think about that. It says when the lunchtime is. Do you know? When is my holiday time? It says when the holiday time is. But you see when you're free. Like now, even me now, right this second, I'm trying to decide when to go on holiday. Then i got to think, who am I bringing on holiday? Then I got to think, what is their lifestyle like? Because I can't just take my son out of school. I can't just go with my mother. But my mom wants to go to Egypt. And I'm thinking, well, if I go to Egypt, I got time in the, in the half term. Okay, the world works that in the half term, most of the people have time. So therefore, the price is going to go up. So the decisions I'm now making is based on other people and based on the, um, the reality of life. When really, I'm free. I can pick you up right now and go airport. I can do that. That's free. But when we are working towards what we individually call success, do we actually know what it looks like? Do we have that picture in mind? Have you pictured yourself there? Like, I don't know, some of us might want to sit on a throne. Have you pictured yourself sitting on the throne? Some of us might picture yourself, I wouldn't even say on a yacht because majority of people don't get to live on yachts. Let's, let's start keeping it real. Majority of people don't get to buy houses abroad because the majority of people don't get to buy houses here. So let's just bring it down and come back to normality. Not reality, because we can live in virtual reality and, you know, we can do anything we want to do and nothing is stopping us. But if we think about what kind of success we actually want and what it looks like, now ask yourself how far away from it are you? Like, can you see it? Have you ever envisioned it? Are you close to it? Are you there already? If you don't question yourself, then you're going to get up and you're going to live life and life's going to live you. So you've got to question yourself. What do I want? 
I remember the first thing I actually wanted is to make sure Mueller Cake can fulfill my lifestyle. Like, I want to make sure that anything I want to do, Mueller Cake's paying for it. That's how I used to even say it. You know, like, right, Mueller Cake's paying for it. Yeah, I'm going for dinner. Yeah, Mueller Cake's paying. Yeah, kid's birthday. Yeah, Mueller Cake's paying. You want school uniform? Yeah, Mueller Cake's paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're picking you up going on holiday right now. Yeah, Mueller Cake's paying. This is what I'm saying. Like, I now know what my success felt like. Then I made some new plans and some new successes. And it's never, ever been around, I want a million pound. It's never, ever been around, I want to be free or even financially free because I just wanted to be free. Like free means proper free. Like my decisions are my decisions. Like it's just that. It's just simple. Like, if I want my children to, I can't even say my children because my children are half and half, so they have to have other inputs. But if I wanted to say my children are going out of school and learning this way, they're learning this way. If I want to say for myself now, I want to just move out of London, I just move out of London. If I want to say to myself now, I just want to binge watch Netflix for three days. I just binge watch three Netflix for three days. You know, I have always felt being free I just want to have an idea and I just want to attempt it. Cool. I just want to do it. But that might not be for you. That might not be for you. It's serious. It's serious. We need to look and see what our goals actually look like and fill them and get involved with them and actually, uh, like I said, measure. How far am I? Even if you're at the beginning, it's cool. It's proper cool because guess what? You're actually on the beginning of a journey, which I was nearly, I could say I was nearly generous of up until a few months ago because as I said, some of my successes, I've ticked them off and I'm thinking, okay, rah, so what now? Metaverse. Yeah, I got met first. New plans, big ones. You know what I'm saying? I want to buy a building. Now, I've always wanted to get the building and stuff, but, you know, big plans now. My plans are bigger. Not about just a system of finances. It's more about if I say I want to be a counsellor, I'll just be a counsellor. If I say I want to be, I want to own a football club. Like the other day, I just saw Serena Williams and the driver there put up some, some millions for Chelsea Football Club. I'm saying, listen, that's my life. I'm on that. That's what I call doing what you want. I'm saying, what the hell are Chelsea selling? What is it? I got sheets right now. What are you saying? Throwing some mills? That's, that's what I'm on. I like just doing random stuff. But I want to emphasize how long it's taken me to get to this type of lifestyle. Because this ain't a lifestyle where I'm showing off Mercedes, I'm showing off Rolexes, I'm showing off holidays. This is the lifestyle of freedom. But how long it's taken me and how much things I've suffered, how many times I've had to go through that uncomfortable feeling, how many times I had to go without, how many times I felt abandoned, how many times I felt that, Because I was trying to be different, people felt that I felt that I was better than them. How many times this hurt me to feel that when I speak about being an entrepreneur, that people who have nine to fives feel like I'm attacking them. That uncomfortable feeling of having to prove yourself, that uncomfortable feeling of having to, to want more people to understand your story, that uncomfortable feeling of going into a room and being stereotyped about because of the color of your skin or because I'm wearing a tracksuit or that uncomfortable feeling of not knowing if the kids are going to like me when I go into the secondary school and talk. Like that uncomfortable feeling of how much do you charge? I'm like, I, I charge 400, you know? Like these things is what's built the, 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 my bottom of my gut, you know? I, I had the vision of being like Virgin. 
not understanding that Virgin started with one tiny company, started with a magazine before you went to the record label. You know, like each of the companies needed running and before he got to be able to use his brand as leverage. When I started understanding how it worked and understanding that, oh, so just the trust that's built from my clothing brand, I can get into a childcare sector because children and parents have already purchased clothing and they trust the brand. So they will send their child to the brand's children's holiday. So understanding the steps that was taken for how many years that I've done them, yes, that's what's made me feel confident that I can just put on an event tomorrow, that I can just start a new company tomorrow, that I can just shoot a video and edit it. I can just, yeah. But I went through a thousand uncomfortable positions. And guess what? This day and age, in this microwave society, we do not want to feel uncomfortable. And guess what? That's why we're not growing. That's being word up truth. There's a part in this road where I said honeymoon period, cool, going up. Then you hit there. Now hair, that, if it was just hair and it was just smooth sailing until you're figuring it out, it'll be cool. But it's not. When you, after you do honeymoon period and you get to hair, it goes boom, boom, whoa, boom, boom, whoa. What's going on here? And then you give it, it gives you a little bit of hope. And it boom, boom again. But it's, that's the part when you got to learn to swim. This honeymoon part is the part, let me give you another example. This honeymoon part is the part when everyone talks about gym at the end of the year. That bit, you know, that way. Yeah, no, I promise this time, this year, I'm on it. Yeah, I've done my membership already. I'm on it. I need to, yeah, no, health is wealth, you know. Health is wealth, you know. You see all that in all the first month and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm in it. I told you. I told you, I'm on it. You know what I mean? Couple weeks, yeah. I'm then money start niggle because it's the beginning of the year. And then a little argument happened. Yeah, I'm not going today and I'm not going tomorrow. So that's the... You see it? That's the swimming part. Like, can you withstand that part? But that part goes for long. And that's why there's not many entrepreneurs. Because that part, that's like, whoa, what do you want me to do today with no money? Okay, what do you want me to do today? I'm angry. Well, what do you want me to do today? No one's even liked my picture. What do you want me to do today? No, I've sent out emails. No one's emailed back. What do you want me to do? I want you to stop today and do again tomorrow. Then I want you to do again the next day. Then I want you to oversee those three days and look at what you've done at what time and what you posted or what you emailed and how you went about it and then do it a different way. And then I want you to do it down for three days and then I want you to look again after six days and compare those two different ways you've done these things and what results they bring. And then after you analyze those results, I want you to swap them around and do these three at the beginning of this week and do these three at the end of this week and then compare them. That's an actual two-week trial on doing stuff on your company, on your business in two different ways and analyzing the results to see how you're going to go forward for the next two months rather than two more weeks. Do you see what I'm saying? This business thing is hard. And I think I don't say it enough. It's hard. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's so hard because of that rocky road. That rocky road's long. That's the time when you realize, well, so how come I have to be the promoter and I have to be the marketer and I have to be the model and then I have to do the go and do the hand-to-hand -hand sell. And then I have to find someone to do the website. And I've got no investment. And no one's helping me. Like, how come I, how come I, oh, you're not the person who wanted to start a business, no. That I. Because a lot of people are not really starting companies that are organizations that other people can lock in on and make your load easier. You're not trying to combine 
companies or combined business ideas or combined businesses, a lot of the businesses, the big ones, they partnered up with people, you know? They partnered up and boom. That person done more of what that person couldn't do. That company done a lot more than that company couldn't do. But I guess we haven't even thought about who our companies are aligned with. Because I understand a lot of us, if not all of us, don't have companies. I want us to start overstanding the difference between a business and a side hustle. There's nothing wrong with having a side hustle. Side hustle is great because it, it fulfills, listen to it carefully, man. It's serious. A side hustle is good because it fulfills your need to want to do that thing. And then it brings in extra income for you to do silliness with. Whereas the thing you're doing over here, which is paying the bills, it has no room for happiness. It has no room for extra spending. So having that side hustle gives you that happiness, gives you that extra income. It's just that you have to find the time to do it in between this thing over here, that's your bread and butter. Because bread and butter is important because you will lose your head. You will lose your head trying to be an entrepreneur and be free. Especially at this age, none of us in here are 21. When we're 21, we can do things for two years. And if it don't work, bam, we're 23. Then we do a next thing, two more years. If it don't work, bam, we're 25. But guess what? People like me is 30 right now. And you get me? I ain't got long. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, ramping. But you know what I mean. Yeah? Years on years and time and time and weeks and months. And, you know, you have to find out. One of the tricks that I found out back in the days was about hiring and firing. Yeah? You have to take long to hire and you have to take quick to fire. <laughs> yeah? Let me say it again, just in case you thought I got it the wrong way around. You have to take long to hire because you see when you are hiring a person, you have to understand where they are in their life. You have to understand what they can do for your company or your business. You have to understand the relationship that you're going to be putting yourself in. You're going to understand the communication or the system that you've had in place for the communication between you and this person. So you have to take time. Majority of the people that come to you are not the people that you should hire. Let me say that bit again before I go on to the second part of the first part. Majority of people that come to you are more than likely not the people you want to hire because they came to you. That means they came to you for their need. They came to you for their reason. They came to you because they think they can see where they can gain or they can fit in or where they think they can support you or where they think you need help. But what happens is, because you're not getting help, because you're not getting support, you take it, it. You say, yeah, man, yeah, come on, boo, yeah, come, come, team, yeah, come, come, come up. You know, I, I do it. I'm telling you things I've done. Everyone's my team. Everyone works with me. Everyone works for me. Everyone's a part of the thing. And then I realize, oh, this person's mud. They actually asked me for a percent in the company. I think, oh, this person's bright. Oh. You know, like you find out different things. But then, like I said, the second part of the first part, you have to be quick to fire. Why? Because more time, the longer you have a rotten apple in your camp is, you know, the more damage it can do. It can damage your, your, your mental. It could damage your finances. It could damage your reputation. It can damage your relationship with someone. It can, it can damage. That's what I said about friends, family, and favors. When you are hiring your friends and your family and that, it can damage your relationship. You need your, 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 your cousin to be your cousin, you know, your sister to be your sister. Like, you know, your boyfriend or your, or your girlfriend to be your, your partner. Allow them to be that. It don't always have to be a business partner. 
They don't always have to be your promoter or your, your number one fan. Maybe they don't even believe in what you do. That's not always a bad thing, you know. They believe in you, and they might not believe in the thing that you're doing. And it's not that you got to prove them wrong. you got to do what you want to do. <laughs> but again, lean away from your emotions. You keep thinking people's onto you or they don't like you because they don't like your thing or they don't agree with your thing. Lean into your business plan. Does your business plan say it's going to work? Does your knowledge, does your studies, does your research, does your target show that this thing? Then do what you're doing. And love that person for that person. Because that thing there, let me show you what happens at the end of this thing here. So we will remember what happened, yeah? We went up with the honeymoon, and then we went on to this rocky road, which is for long. Now there comes a time, whether it comes in one month, one year, five years, nine years, it will come. There's a time where it will come, where it is make or break. This time right here. So you see that half of my hand is under, down here, and half of my hand is above. Make or break. Because after you're doing that, you're going to hit that wall. And it's that time when you're going to make or you're going to break. That means you're going to go up or you're going to go down. And let me tell you where that time is. That time is when you're in a dark place. That time is when you, you've lost hope. That time is when you, you cannot believe you've done this for this long and you're not seeing that result. That feeling that hurts, that feeling that you just wanted to, you just wish that you can do more or you wish someone would just hear your story. You wish that you knew more or you had an investment or something. At that stage, it can get so painful that it breaks you. And then that's it, it's finished. It breaks you, you, you become lost because you, you know, you've been doing this thing for two years, been doing this thing for a year, five months, been doing it for five years, you know, and you just feel like, okay. <sighs> then you start, the doubters start coming in. All the people that told you, no, oh, you should not do that, you should do this, or all that time you was thinking, well, oh, I'm going to prove you wrong, and now you're thinking, oh, shit, they're going to laugh at me, or now nah, that, rare, 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 rare. And if we just stay there one minute and talk about that emotion, because that emotion will come, because everybody posts on Instagram, meaning when that thing don't work, those posts are still there, or people still seen them, even if you delete them, it's in your their mind. Like how many of you in here, just give me a sign or something, remembers that I used to do teeth whitening? Remember I used to do teeth whitening now? Do you know why? Because nobody remembers your losses. You see it? D-Rose remembers, yeah? Nobody remembers your losses. We talk about Ronaldo's greatest goals in that. Ronaldo takes about 100 shots every game and he misses 100. But they say, Ronaldo, he scored. He's the best. That's all you hear. Ronaldo, bam, he's the best. Michael Jordan, he's the best. But he missed Bill shots. So it's the same thing with my businesses. I'll start businesses. I'll start side hustles. I've got companies registered that I haven't touched. Sims Cuisine, go look it up. Sims Cuisine, limited. To my food company, I was going to do ghost kitchens. I was all gassed and that. Started filming dumplings and that. You know, like I was on it. Well, rah, cool. Took another diversion, you get me? Yeah. But people are afraid of what others are going to say. Like, do you think that you can comment on what my failure or my, or my like, time that I tried something? The person who didn't try nothing, that person. You could never let that person comment on your life. Never. Even the people that do do, do 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 things. But guess what? The reason why I wasn't even going to mention the people that do do things is because those are the people that will say to you, don't worry, brush yourself off. Let's go again. 
or they will say to you, oh, come, let me show you what to do better. So don't worry about the people, those people. And then especially don't worry about the people that haven't tried nothing in their life. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. But the make or break, that's the time it could break you. But let's quickly touch on the, on, on the, on the make you. One hour later, one day later, one week later, sometime soon, something happens. It's between the man upstairs or the woman upstairs, God, between your self-belief, between your causes. So all the stuff that you've done in the past, few weeks, few months, or how many years, something clicks. And you either get that phone call, you get that DM, you get that breakthrough moment, you get a contract, you get that self-belief to step into your light, step into your greatness. You get that moment of urge. Yeah. Yeah. That there. That's a moment. Like, that's a moment. <laughs> that's a moment. You, you cry. You actually cry for no reason. It just comes out of your eyeballs. <laughs> it just drops down. You think, bro, this is mad. If they only knew what I went through. But it's because you didn't give up. Believe me. Study yourself. Study your business plan, your mood board, your goals, your targets, your life, the world. Just analyze it for a few days. And say, what are you scared of? What's the worst that could happen? The only way is up if I already feel down. Trust me, people. God is great, and you guys are very lucky we have this power circle. So you got a lot of people to lean on. See it. Um, anyone want to give me any feedback? Anyone want to fill in anything? Dennis? Thank you. Okay. Bex, I think this, this call literally has fired me up so much. Like, I don't know about anyone else, but I feel like, yeah, he's definitely just talking directly to me and everything that I'm growing through mm -hmm. at the moment. And I know you said you didn't plan this session, so I know just you speaking from the heart is just so, so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where I'm at at the moment. That's good. Um, Embrace it. Yeah. Embrace. I, know, I know all of you know like what I'm going through with my gran in hospital. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right, then. Going around, man. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. And I just want to thank Dexter. Right. Because you know, like, like this call literally just lifts me up. And I'm at that rocky point at the moment, but I know I'm just making it through. Like, yeah. for my kids and everything I'm going through. And, like, you all are, like, family. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I can tell you, like, what I'm going through and you know that I'm just growing through it. And in terms of like the business, I know I've got, I've got no option to make it because like what I've been doing is from like 25. So everything you said mm -hmm. about the feelings of entrepreneur and even just knowing my worth now to charge more and like getting the systems in place so that I'm never like, I never have like a broke day or I never feel like I can't afford things or just all of that. And that's why I'm getting emotional because like, I know I'm getting through it, okay. even though there's so much going on in my life. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you. You're more than welcome, girl, man. You're more than welcome. I, I, I told you you. from the beginning, you know, we are, we've got to go on a journey. I told you that. And I even established now that it's very hard for you lot to partner up with myself because of how much I've learned through business and how much wisdom I have actually got and the level of what my business actually is. 
but I've said we're going to go on this journey together and we're going to support each other through thick and thin. And it's got to be so gracious when each of us have that breakthrough moment and come back on and share it. Like someone else is going to cry because of that success of another person, because they know the pain that you've gone through and they don't know it all. They just can feel it. So, yeah, I love to, I love to hear it, even though I don't wish no bad stuff on human's life, but the pain, the pain, yeah, that's what brings results. Mm, go for it. Got you. Glennis. Yeah, sorry. Um, strength. Oh, good evening, everyone. Um, Danielle, strength, peace and love to you. We're, we're all here to support you. So don't feel that you're going through this on your own. We, we, you can lean on us virtually, so yeah. to speak. But all, all is well. It is well. Um, yeah, sorry. So on the back of that as well. Just, just, I just had a question for everyone on here who actually owns their own business or has a business. Going back to um, what Dexter was talking about in the beginning, friends, family, and favor. How did any of you deal with, um, when you went to your friends and your family and you told them what you were doing um, and you expected their support, how did it make you feel when the ones who you expected to support you actually didn't? Your, your ride or die friends and family. How did it make you feel when they didn't support you? Did you think to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna make it with or without you or did it demotivate you in any way? How did it make you feel? Good question. How can someone else can answer can I, that? Can I answer that? Um, so it's weird because right now I'm going through, it's not that my friends are not supporting me, but they don't understand that I've had to step back with the going out, the eating, the part, well, not even the parties, but just going out and having that kind of lifestyle mm. because I've had to put time into this. And I know when they see me on Instagram and they see me posting, they see me posting amongst this group, I know some of them are feeling some type of way, but at the same time, they don't understand that I'm going, I could be, I'm going through hard things all the time, but this is the face that I have to show to continue to progress because they all know that I want to move from my nine to five into doing massage permanently. So it's just something I've had to kind of put a wall up against and just kind of just continue to do what I'm doing because really and truthfully, they're not going to help. It's not about them helping me, but I know where I need to be and I know what I need to do for myself and my children. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Shanae, would you say you've almost um, imposed a f your fired tactic to say, right, you don't want to support me in any way, then for now I love you, but I'm going to fire you? Kind of, yeah. But I've I've put a six month plan in place, and I've already let them know. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they're not on board with me and supporting me and just making sure I can get through six months without doing anything, then so be it but at the same time it's not anything I hold against them personally mm -hmm. I just know I need to do what I'm doing and hopefully they'll be there at the end of what I'm doing but right now it's not something I can take personally because there's other things that we all have to go through so yeah, yeah. exactly no 100% thank you anyone else want to um, just, um, answer Glennis's question Is that um, Miriam so um well Glennis I technically started three years ago mm -hmm. but three years ago when I spoke to people they were like oh this is this won't work this won't work this won't work and when I did my testers it didn't it didn't produce what I wanted mm -hmm. and then I suddenly thought maybe they were right da, da, da. but since joining this group I have gotten motivated again mm -hmm. talking to Dexter talking to Kenyatta talking to Danielle and just being in power circle, when I first started, I was like, oh my God, I don't have a business. I don't know what I'm doing here. But something said to stay, something said, I, I don't know what it was, but I was guided to, to, to join and I was guided to stay. And each time there's a power circle meeting, I leave and then like ideas pour into my head. And every week it was like, it was slowly building back up this idea I had. And then 
because of Paris Circle, because of Bakery, I was talking to Hero about it. And he's like, but mommy, you know, we can do this. And then I was like, okay, I'll do the first sample and I'll get him to be my tester. And then he changed things about it. And he's like, okay, why don't we check with the Paris Circle people and the Bakery people and see if they like it? Because they'll just be honest. They won't, they're not gonna lie to you. They're, gonna, they're not gonna be fake about it. Yeah. And so like now when Dexter was saying, um, a lot of these big businesses partner up from the beginning, I started thinking, I have people that are already telling me they're partnering up with me and I'm just starting. And Thank so you. I feel more motivated and I feel more, I feel more confident that when things start doing that, I have support. Yeah. And I don't have to think about, oh, the people that told me three years ago it wouldn't work out or the people that I was talking to, they're like, ah, oh, that's not a good idea. I don't think you can do that. Or it's going to, that's going to take too much time. All the naysayers have, Power Circle have pushed them out. They've just, they've just been obl obliterated. And so however this journey pans out with me and Hero's project, business, um, we have support. And because I'm here learning what to expect and learning what steps I need to take and knowing that if I slip, I've got support to pull me back up, I'm not scared. A couple of years ago, when people were saying no, like, I think the fear of everything just made me like, okay, you know what, I'll just stop. But now it's like, I wanna try it this way. And like, our logo is almost finalized. And even like, cause my brother does graphic design. And so I said to Hero, let's go to him, tell him our ideas. And we did that two weeks ago. And Hero said to him, hey, don't mess this up. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? He said, wait, what? I said, oh no, that's my business partner talking. My business partner said, we're giving you this. Don't mess it up. Otherwise we have to find someone else. And so each step of the way, like two, every two, three days, he comes back with something. He's like, okay, I have this idea. I have the idea. What do you want me to change? What do you want me to put? Even today, yesterday, Hero got hurt. This morning at 10 a.m., he sent us stuff. He goes, what do you want us to change? What do you want me to add there? And he's just on it because Hero said to him two weeks ago, don't mess this up. This is my business. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly thought, okay, so it's not just me being accountable to myself. I'm also accountable to him. Mm -hmm. and also. The one person who was never in the loop, who we've now gone to in family, is like, yes, 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 I believe in this. I am going to help you with the designs. I'm going to help you with the labels. Tell me what you need and I'll do it. And he didn't even say, how much are you paying me or this and that. And he was like, mom, remember, we need to pay him at some point. And I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> good that you have that in your head that he's going to get paid. I said, but he was never not going to get paid for it. But it was just like, all the little things that I kind of said, okay, I'll, I'll put this at a later date, he was picking up on. And it's him, well, I'm, if he's in the room and I'm at a power circle or if we're in the bakery and talking, he's absorbing information. So when I miss on something, he's picking it up. And so as a team, we're growing and we know we have this support. So for whoever is going through the shaky bits, Dan, we've got you. Like you, we've got you emotionally, we've got you in your business, we've got you for support. You know, you can call on any one of us for what you need because like some, there'll always be somebody to talk to. And I love that about Power Circle that it doesn't matter what we're going through. There's somebody we can talk to. And I'm, I'm truly, truly appreciate it. We're grateful for you guys. And as Danielle said, like these calls are, they, they hold us up each week. So thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Miriam. That was lovely. Really lovely. Um, before we go, anyone else want to add um, anything what they're thinking or any feedback from tonight's call? Let me yeah. add on that. Yes. Hello, right. everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I want to add on now what Glennis just asked. That was a good question. So, like... um. I've done a lot of businesses. And when you're coming in the business, fast business, obviously you're gonna lean on your family, friends, and favors. That's all you know. So the more you grow, and then you understand like you self, you're growing. It doesn't mean like your business is growing, you're gonna to lean to, towards that three Fs. But the more you understand how to manage your emotions, your journey, and your profit, 
your profit is not going to come from those three. The more you take serious with your business now, then you manage your emotions. And your family going to end up taking like free stuff. So that's when the favor comes in. And then they're going to make you do extra work. And they're not even going to take you serious because they know you as they know you. Maybe your, your, their son, your nephew, your, their cousin. Wow. And then they're going to take you as a serious business person. So well, the more you grow into your business and the more you learn how to label them as your cousin is your cousin, your, your mom is your mom, your auntie is your auntie, and then from there, they're just your family. You don't, you don't really, you don't, you don't expect anything from them. If they come to buy, you make sure you treat them as a, a customer. But until the business is done, then you become as a um, family. So that's why I'll take you on that. So, but when you're starting off, yeah, you're going to use them. Because that's who you know. But in the long term, they're not going to really bring you profit. So the more you grow into your business, that, that way you learn how to manage your emotions and then you learn how to label your friends, just your friends. No hard feelings, but as long as you learn how to manage your, your, your emotions. Yeah, and that's it. That was a good question. Thank you for that, my brother. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Anybody else want to add anything before we finish? Oh, can I just say uh, happy birthday to Anya for this week? I hope you had a, a good one, Anya. Yeah, I second that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I had a nice one. Thanks. Thanks for all the birthday blessings. Um, yeah, I had a, yeah, um, the household took me out to Sky Gardens up in London. So, yeah, it was pushy, a, pushy, yeah. Pushy. I know, I know what's coming up, I tell you, I tell you. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was really nice, but thank you. Thank you for this. <laughs> uh, Cookie, you want to say something? No, I was just saying, like what Benny's was saying, I even had that same kind of situation today, having to be strict, and like what you said to me before, that your prices are your prices. If you want to do a discount, do a discount. And I think it really does make the difference as well, because I think so much people, when you're trying to like be self-employed or business, I know you said there's a difference <laughs> that yeah. um, that they that they oh yeah, everyone's like okay cool when you're giving them stuff, and then when you tell them your price, they're like oh like walk away, and that's the most hurtful thing. Like I think the the big one is there are a few people that I do know associated with being supportive, but I think like the circle would give me the most support. And I know my one's a bit of a sticky one because it's not like a service that is, is like a need. So it's when you need so it's when when somebody wants it. So that's what makes it a bit but I know that I know that my support is here and like I'm I'm with also I think I think as well like we need to understand that every time there's an event, there are so many signs what is happening and say and the jar, whatever you're calling is trying to move for us right now. We just got to break through. And that's why I'm here today. Because you see, I've been in so much power circles. I've been in ill. I've had madness. That you, obviously, that's, you know, I've been in the hospital. Like, this has been a lot. But this week, I said, I'm getting here regardless. So thank you for that. And also to say, yeah, I think that what, you're, what you discussed this week was just, I think it was meant to happen in it. That was, that was a word. It wasn't even a meeting today. It was a word. I think it hit so many people. So thank you and um, great to be in here for you after all, so many weeks as well. So thanks. No, and you're welcome, man. You're welcome. What I said today was straight from the chest. You know what I mean? I usually got little notes. I usually got little ideas on what we're going to talk about. But yeah, it just came off the dome and I'm happy it hit home. Maybe it's the state, it's the position that I'm in. What made me, you know, wanted to express that I'm not perfect. You know, today I was five minutes late. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, you know, um, go through things, isn't it? We go through things, we go through things. But I'm really, really happy to hear that everybody is grateful for the circle in more than just a business way because it makes the circle more meaningful. And even though I know for a thousand percent once the NFT goes live, we're going to have a lot more strangers in there who got to come, who's going to go, who's going to stay. 
But the core of this power circle, oh yeah, it means something. And I, I, I hear it every time. So I can say I appreciate you guys as well. So yeah, thank you all for a great session today. And yeah, let's have a great week again. Let's have a great week. For those of you that don't know, um, Saturday coming, we have a beauty bar um, open day. So if you know anyone who's a nail, neck a nail technician or a hair braider or eyelash technician or a pedicure person or facial person who's looking for spaces to rent, it will be a good day to bring them down and show them space. Or if you are a lady yourself um, that wants to get pampered, come down. It's silly discounts on the day. Um, and it's a day that we're just going to have a nice little... Hopefully the sun's out, you know, balloons will be out, drinks, yeah, like a music, like a facial, bam, bam, yeah? So that's Saturday, 12 till, 12 till 5. Um, but you'll see the stuff everywhere where, from all of us. But yeah, I love you and leave you guys. And yeah, stay strong, everybody. And remember, we're here to support each other, yeah? All right. Blessings on Good evening. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.